So we are lucky to find ourselves tonight here at the Henry Ford. Uh, this is a really special place because it probably encompasses not only automotive history, but the history of design over the last couple of centuries better than any place I can think of in the United States. And Ford's had a, a long history. And if you go back over the last hundred plus years, you'll see some of those vehicles here in this, uh, in this museum. 49 Ford was a breakthrough, possibly one of the milestone vehicles in, in Ford Motor Company's history. We've just come out of World War II. Ford's put a lot of money into the war effort. We didn't have a car to sell. Ford's butt, frankly, was up against the hot pipes, and it took great design to actually get them back on the road. The car that Charles and Ray Eames drove when they were, when they were in that particular time period, they had a black 49 Ford with a saddle leather interior, and it was the epitome of simplicity and elegance. It's a great looking car to this day. I, I'm inspired every time I see it. If I, if I look at, at things I'm attracted to, uh, if I go to the movies, I kind of still love going to animated films. And there's a natural instinct to just gravitate toward the character. There's always a human element. And I think capturing that in the shape of something and communicating that to a customer, be it in a film or in a, in a product, is, is the magic. A, a good vehicle tells a story. Um, it, and I, again, to, to relate it back to the movie analogy, You've got great movies. You've got movies that are wonderful stories, Academy Award winning stories, and people walk out of that movie and it stays with them for decades to come. And then you've got movies that are special effects and five minutes later, it's out of your mind and you never think about it again. The majority of movies are like that. The majority of cars, they're also special effects. There's no story there. But the cars that resonate with people are the cars that have a story that people can say, oh, you know, I remember when that was a part of my life or a friend of mine had one of those. And look at this, this is a modern interpretation of it. Those are the stories I love. If you talk to a customer, which is a human, living a life somewhere, somehow, with a certain amount of money, they've got their real life at home and then they've got their life that they aspire to. So I always say, if you see someone in their home, that's who they are. If you see someone in their automobile, that's who they want to be. So it's my job to hopefully capture in sheet metal and communicate in sheet metal what these people have verbally aspired to. Well, our creative process starts with uh, allowing everybody to screw up. So uh, about, uh, in a lot like a film, about 90% of what we do ends up on the cutting room floor. So I love mistakes, so let's get as many up on the wall as possible. And we'll have a look at them, knowing full well that many of them won't make the cut. So it's all right to make mistakes, that's where creativity comes from. But the little zingers, the little jewels that come out from all of those mistakes are where the magic happens. And once we've started to, to sort of isolate those and find the friends of those little jewels, then we start to find a, a design that starts to resonate with our customer. Um, latest trend in global culture is that there is a funneling of culture together. Uh, if you go back 5, 10, 15 years ago, you would go from country to country around the world and you would discover more surprises, I think, than you do now. Because of social media, because of the amount of information that is instantaneously at your fingertips, you're starting to be able to go around the world and I think be surprised slightly less. And, and people are online saying, hey, have you seen this? I love this. I like it. I don't like it. And all of that becomes shorthand for something's good or something's not good and something's successful or not. People just want the best design now because they know what's available and they know what's available generally as fast as anyone else in the world. The part that interests me for Ford is global mainstream culture. We are not an elitist luxury manufacturer. We are a mainstream manufacturer. And actually, the most satisfying part of it is offering a premium product to our mainstream customer at a mainstream price. 
We've just come out with the 2013 Fusion, which is being seen, I think, as a milestone, and I'm hoping is going to be viewed uh, as, a, as a sales success as well. All the signs are good, but uh, we're so proud of that vehicle, we could absolutely pop. That is really what makes the history of Ford so wonderful. It allows you to look back over the decade, you see the milestone vehicles, you have the, the pride that you've been able to have a small part of that history, and you hope somewhere over the next couple of years, you'll have a few more before you go off into retirement.